Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Chairman of the Alamo City Chamber of Commerce, Wayne Terry. Good afternoon. While they're exiting the stage, can help me in recognizing and thanking the Johnson High School Band for their performance today. What a wonderful job. Thank you so much. My name is Wayne Terry. I work for HEB as well as the honor of being the new chairman of the board of the Alamo City Chamber of Commerce. San Antonio is known as America's City on the Rise. And for the Alamo City Chamber, the Chamber on the Rise, we boldly share this vision. One of our city's richest traditions is the engagement of our community leaders. We are fortunate to have a history of committed citizens who act as trailblazers, mentors, and supporters, who not only embrace the vision of a greater San Antonio, but also seeing it through to reality. Many of you are great community leaders in the room today. Daryl Byrd is a great example of one of those community leaders. As the president and CEO for SA 2020, Daryl is leading the community-wide effort to chart a bold course that over the next 10 years will ultimately transform San Antonio into one of the nation's undisputably great cities. Daryl is a consensus builder, and with his record of success for taking on transformational projects, it is clear to see that he can turn our city's vision into reality. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very proud to introduce a member of the Alamo City Chamber of Commerce, and we are very supportive of the leadership displayed by Daryl Byrd and SA 2020. Please help me welcome him to the podium. Daryl? Thank you very much, Wayne. Good afternoon, everyone. Really pleased to be with you. I get the, uh, the honor in uh, two to three minutes of introducing our mayor. That's a really hard job. Two to three minutes to in introduce a guy who has done some extraordinary things for our city and has taught us how to look to the future, not his future, but look to the future together. I'm going to try to knock this out in two to three minutes. If I go over, you'll forgive me. You know, this is one of those occasions where we get together from time to time, at least once a year, and we say things like this. There's no better time to be in San Antonio. But you know, I think today, and really over the past decade, it's really been a true statement. There really is no better time to be in San Antonio. As a matter of fact, from my perspective, I would add a little two or a little three at the top of that, because I think we're on to something great and we're doing some things that are uh, really extraordinary and much better than we've, we've done in past decades. We continue to grow, we continue to evolve as a city. You know, this is a time when across America and cities large and small and everything in between, mayors and leaders and captains of industry and civic leaders and individuals are trying to figure out how to do more with less. It seems sometimes, though, that they're doing less with less. In San Antonio, we're actually changing the game here. San Antonio, we're actually building opportunity. We're actually creating opportunity. Maybe sometimes the resources are scarce, but this is a city where we've been able to do some things with great leadership like our mayors to make something out of nothing. You know, we're celebrating something today, which we already know. Maybe the rest of the world isn't quite on to it yet. Most of them are. This is a city that's in motion. This is a city that has great momentum. This is a city that's on the rise. Now, you're going to hear from the mayor in a little bit, and he's going to tell you about the, the path that we've worn over the past year, from the beginning of 2013 to today. He's going to talk a little bit about where we stand today, and he's going to share his hope for the future and what he sees ahead. And I'm going to leave that to him to get into the details of what that means and how exciting that's going to be for all of us. But I want to reflect on a few things. For me personally, when I think of his leadership, when I think of what he's all drawn us all to, to do, to dream, to think about our city, I want to reflect on a couple of things and, uh, that are important to me. I think about the fact that since he became mayor, he has drawn and driven an unprecedented amount 
of focus and attention on public education driven straight out of his front door, City Hall. It's been unprecedented. And great things have been yielded from that. Our high school graduation rate now exceeds our SA 2020 levels, somewhere around 92 percent high school graduation rate. We began with a goal of 85 percent, and at that time, our high school graduation rate was 75 percent. Extraordinary things are happening. You see the great investment that you as San Antonians have created out of pre-K for SA driven by his leadership to invest at the earliest stages in our young people's education, all driven out of his vision for the future. You know, this is a guy who has what I would call great eyesight, SA 2020 vision, as a matter of fact. And by that, what I mean is he's got the long-term eyesight to be able to see into the future and to see what opportunities and promise it holds, but he's also got the ability to look up close, to focus on the details that matter, focus on the path ahead. That's a rare, rare combination of skills and qualities in a leader, and we've got that right here in San Antonio. I reflect on the mayor's leadership in creating a fitness culture in San Antonio. This is a city where two years ago we were leading the nation in obesity. 68 percent of all adults were either at an unhealthy rate or obese. Under his leadership today, the adult obesity rate has actually been driven down to below the state average. Can't remember the last time that's been a reality in San Antonio. That equates to tens of thousands of San Antonians, our brothers, our sisters, our mothers, our fathers, who are no longer at risk of certain types of cancers or heart disease. Extraordinary things are happening in this city. And again, we've got a mayor that creates openings for us to chart that course and to build it together. That's rare. That doesn't happen across the country. I think about the fact that the mayor is the mayor of all of San Antonio. I think about how years ago he collaborated with City Councilwoman Ivy Taylor and focused on the east side and bought resources and collaboration to that community. And now the east side of San Antonio stands as the only city in all of America that has both a promised neighborhood and a choice neighborhood, bringing tens of millions of dollars worth of resources and investment to our city. I think about our mayor's strategic focus in other areas, in our downtown, in our neighborhoods, in arts and culture. San Antonio now stands as one of the most attractive places in all of America for college-educated talent, number six of all the big cities in America. Number six, San Antonio is also one of the best places to retire. So San Antonio is not only a great place to begin your career, but a great place to end it. This is a city for the young and for the young at heart. Things are changing in San Antonio. We're on to a bold future, and again, we're doing it together. I wanted to, uh, before I close, call attention to a group that is here with us today that I know is important to the mayor. And this is a group from SAISD, the SAISD Student Advisory Committee. If you all could stand. You're sitting at two tables here. We were talking about student engagement and civic engagement and the fact that this mayor, following the model of great mayors before him in San Antonio, again creates openings for folks to not only be bystanders and great things happening in their city, but actually be the producers of that great thing. And that young group of young people representing every high school in SAISD, including the Young Women's Leadership Academy, are doing that very thing, advising their superintendent, advising the board, and advising the administration on important matters to them within the campus and outside of it. So again, we applaud them and the mayor for giving them an opportunity. And the last thing I'll say before the next voice you hear, which will be our mayor, I'm a Virginian by birth. I've been in San Antonio seven years, 17 years, so this is home. But I want to steal a great brand coming from Virginia, and it's Virginia Slims. We've come a long way, baby. <laughs> we have come a long way, baby. But I cannot wait to see where we go next. The next voice you hear is our mayor. Help me in welcoming Mayor Julian Castro.
thank you very much. Good afternoon. Well, first of all, uh, thank you very much, Daryl, for that introduction and more importantly for the great work uh, that you're doing at SA 2020 and the leadership that you and the entire SA 2020 crew has shown. Uh, I also want to, of course, thank our host today, the Chambers of Commerce. Let's give them a great round of applause, the Greater Chamber, the Hispanic Chamber, the Alamo City Chamber, and the Alamo Asian Chamber. I also want to just uh, recognize and uh, thank uh, County Judge Wolf, who I know is here today. Nelson is somewhere out there uh, for his great work in our city. I have to tell you that uh, I've enjoyed uh, working with Nelson uh, during my last couple of terms and his, and I look forward to working with him in his next term as well. I also want to uh, recognize our great city manager, the best city manager in the United States, Cheryl Scully, who is here with us today for her excellent work. You know, nothing that we get done at City Hall is done alone. It's done by the collaboration of the staff and, of course, the City Council. And I'm uh, so pleased that I have a great City Council that works hard, that believes in making this city a better place, no matter what part of town you come from, and sees everything in that regard. I'd like to ask my Council colleagues who are here to please stand and be recognized. I also, uh, of course, want to recognize my own staff. They don't often get recognized. I'm terrible about these kinds of things, but uh, I'd like for them to stand up uh, because they make me successful. I know they're here today, Jaime and Francis and Patty and Stacy, Adam, Jed, Matthew. Of course, I want to also thank the uh, great Johnson High School Jaguar Musicians who are up here, the band, let's give them a big round of applause, as well as uh, the Herf Elementary School students and the SAISD students that we had here. And uh, this is a rare treat for me during the middle of the day to get to spend a little bit of time with both my mother, Rosie, who is here, uh, and also, of course, the love of my life, my wife, Erica. Thank you all very much for everything that you mean to me. There are two folks who are not here today. Uh, we took Karina to school because she was looking forward to going to a book fair this afternoon uh, at her elementary school. And of course, my brother Joaquin isn't here because they have votes uh, this afternoon in DC. You know, my brother likes to go around uh, claiming that I'm a minute uglier than he is. And uh, just recently, I took the odd step of dyeing my hair blonde and proved him right. Actually, what I say these days is that the difference between Joaquin and me is that I have the better job. <laughs> if there's one thing that is clear in America today, it is that cities are where things still get done in this nation. Cities are the places where people of different backgrounds, different perspectives, roll up their sleeves, put ideology aside, and actually accomplish things and San Antonio is the better off for it. This much is true of our city in 2014. San Antonio is a city on the rise. Our graduation rate is up. Our unemployment rate is down. Our real estate market is up. And our teen pregnancy rate is down. Our income levels are up. And our obesity rate is down. And from every corner of the nation, as well as the world, people are taking notice of San Antonio in a way that they haven't in a long time. Folks are watching this city as a driver, one indicator of America's prosperity in the 21st century global economy. And San Antonio's success is owing to two things, hard work and a strong vision. The hard work is done by folks in their everyday lives, employees and employers, in small companies and big ones, nonprofits, the public sector, the private sector. 
The vision was forged a few years ago by thousands of San Antonians as part of SA 2020 to create a brain power community that is the liveliest city in the United States. To make that vision a reality, the number one goal that we have in this city is to ensure that we create brain power and that we match that brain power to 21st century opportunities. In November of 2012, San Antonians took an unprecedented step to do just that by passing pre-K for SA. When San Antonians passed pre-K for SA, they did so on a good about of faith. But in 2013, we opened up the first two pre-K for SA centers and have welcomed 675 four-year-olds from throughout our community to pre-K for SA. One of those four-year-olds is here with us today. When Tracy Mayon first heard about Pre-K for SA, she was, you know, she says, a bit skeptical about enrolling her daughter Haley in a program that was in its first year. You see, Tracy had worked in the past as a substitute teacher, and so she knew a little bit of something about good curriculum and bad curriculum and a good functioning school and a not so good functioning one. But she decided to take a leap of faith. She enrolled Haley in the Northside Pre-K for SA Center. And every now and then she would go and make a surprise visit and check in on Haley and see how everything was going. And six months later, Tracy said that she could see the positive effect that Pre-K for SA was having on Haley. She said, in fact, that sometimes Haley would even correct her. Those of y'all who are parents know this routine. She would tell her that the shape they were looking at with four sides wasn't a diamond, it was called a rhombus. Haley and Tracy are both here today and they're great examples of what can happen in early childhood education. Let's give them a big round of applause. And later this year, Pre-K for SA will open up the next two centers of educational excellence. We will enroll in total 1,500 young four-year-olds, and we will continue our march to ensure that we have the best prepared, most well-educated young people in all of the state of Texas. And one of the challenges that we have is on the city's east side. Fortunately, San Antonio's east side is the only neighborhood in the United States with a Promise Neighborhood Grant, a Choice Neighborhood Grant, and now a Promise Zone designation. The focus around East Point is to create a cradle to college to career pipeline of opportunity and talent, not only for the East Side, but for our entire community. And already we're seeing incredible results. On the East Point neighborhood, at each of the six schools, student enrollment and student attendance is up. Chronic absenteeism is down, thanks to the good work of Family Services Association and City Year. And the four-year graduation rate at Sam Houston High School is now 84%. When the application for the designation was made, it was at 45. If I could see one thing come to pass by the time I leave office, it would be this, that the roles, the list of graduates at our high schools and our colleges is much longer than it is today. I've said many times that I feel very blessed in my own life like I'm sure you do, that I was able to get a good public school education and then go to college and to law school and to come back to this city that I love and to reach my dreams. And that's what I want for all of your sons and daughters and grandchildren. It's important that we not only show them from afar how much we care, but we show them at home and that those of us in public service also encourage them when I got elected mayor, I said that I would visit every single middle school in our city. And with the exception of two or three that got away, I did that. 
By the end of the 2014-2015 school year, I will visit every single high school in our city to encourage our young people to reach for their dreams, to stay in school, and to go to college and become great entrepreneurs and success stories for the future. And when our students graduate from high school, we need to ensure that their talent is matched with opportunities in great 21st century industries. Over the last few years, with the help of Judge Wolf and Mario Hernandez at our EDF, we've transitioned, enhanced our economic development model to pursue jobs in new tech industries, including the new energy economy. I'm very pleased that in 2014, the CPS Energy OCI Solar Partnership will produce the largest solar manufacturing facility in the entire United States of America with 805 jobs, good paying jobs for San Antonians. But we also need to look to the longer term. Just recently, through SA 2020, we appointed a talent pipeline task force with involvement from our business community to determine how we can best ensure that the skills of our workforce meet the needs of our employers, whether those employers are Toyota or Rackspace or Boeing or others. We want to ensure that in San Antonio, those companies have the manpower that they need with the skills that are right to grow here instead of somewhere else. And we want to ensure that our young people understand what their options are so that they can pursue the job that is best for them. And I know that that effort will be successful. But it's not just about meeting the needs of our big companies. We also understand that Three quarters of the jobs that are created in San Antonio come from small businesses. In fact, especially businesses younger than five years. Last year during my State of the City address, I talked about Cafe Commerce. Cafe Commerce is a one-stop resource center on the first floor of our main library for any entrepreneur who has a dream of starting a business or growing one. This June, we will cut the ribbon on Cafe Commerce to make sure that San Antonio is a place for startups. <laughs> Being competitive also means that our internet speed has to be fast and information must flow quickly. That's why I'm pleased that San Antonio last week officially announced that it's in discussions with Google Fiber. Mark my words, San Antonio will become a Google Fiber city. The second part of what we're accomplishing, the reason that San Antonio is rising, is the fact that we're making San Antonio a more livable city. That starts with ensuring that our urban core is vibrant. This is the decade of downtown, and I'm pleased that in 2014, you will see the physical turnaround of our downtown. We're opening up eight housing developments in our urban core, the total 486 units, and breaking ground on 11 more that will total over 1,200 new units. Because of the work of Mayor Hardberger and County Judge Wolf and Bruce Bug and his colleagues. This summer, we will open up the, tenor, the Tobin Center for the Performing Arts so that San Antonio has a world-class home for its symphony and its arts organizations. And just down the block, a new Travis Park will rise as we give more attention to the green space in downtown and throughout our city. 2014 will mark the year that we break ground on the first phase of the hemisphere redevelopment, the play escape. Y'all know that old wooden playground in the middle of hemisphere? 
the one that you're always afraid for your kid or grandkid to touch because you think they're going to get splinters, we're going to have a new one. And it's going to mark the beginning of a great renaissance at Hemisphere that will be a world-class park for San Antonio right in our backyard. We're also pleased that four letters that mean San Antonio will rise up above the skyline on a black tinted window building. USAA is moving 150 employees to downtown San Antonio, and we hope that's just the first of many. In years past, I've talked about something that people have been waiting for for a long time in our urban core, something that seemed so elusive, it just seemed like it would never happen. But in 2014, we will break ground on a downtown grocery store at last, finally, for the residents of our urban core. We also have to ensure that we get the basics of good government right. I'm pleased that today our utilities, CPS Energy and SAWS, are working together like they never have before. The last few years, Texas has experienced the second worst drought in its recorded history. We have seen the necessity of being innovative, being collaborative, being resourceful when it comes to water. A couple of years ago, I had the opportunity, along with a delegation of San Antonio business leaders, to visit Israel. And I was very impressed with how resourceful that nation has been in terms of desalination. And I'm pleased that in the coming years, CPS and SAWS will work to create the first desal power plant co-location facility in the United States. A few years ago, this community had the foresight to create the aquifer storage and recovery facility. The ASR has been a godsend. In fact, just this past year, it helped us avoid stage three drought restrictions. To his credit, Robert Puente commissioned a study to see what the capacity truly is of that storage facility. So far, we've been storing almost 108,000 acre feet of water in the ASR. I'm pleased that now we will, we will save and store 200,000 acre feet in that ASR, helping to meet the needs of San Antonio in drought. At the same time, we have to ensure that our goal when it comes to water is not just to keep up, but to get ahead. To ensure that when it comes to the business community in town and out of town, there is never a question about whether San Antonio has enough water, no matter the severity of the drought. And that's why, as I've remarked before, we will ensure that we keep our freshwater, open, freshwater options open as well so that we have the opportunity to take advantage of that option. At City Hall, we used to joke that we were the only major city with a AAA bond rating for, from each of the major rating agencies. And really, that wasn't a joke. That was true. Although I doubt that some of my fellow mayors across the country like to hear that. As of December, the fact is that we are the only major American city with a AAA bond rating by any major rating agency. I want to thank the city manager and her staff for the great work that they have done. We'll continue to be fiscally responsible. And that means that it was, as we go into the budget process this fall, we will continue to make the tough choices necessary to tighten our belt. Much has been written and spoken about the issue of legacy costs. I'm appreciative of the work that former Councilman Reed Williams and his task force did to look at this issue. 
Our firefighters and police officers are the best in the nation. They deserve excellent benefits. It is inaccurate to compare San Antonio to Detroit. We are not Detroit. Our pension system is in good health, and we have managed our resources well. At the same time, it's also clear that the costs of health care are growing faster than other costs. I have told the unions that I hope that together at the negotiating table, we can find ways to put reasonable cost controls on health care and other costs in our public safety budget. The goal is not just to keep our public safety static, but to grow the number of officers and firefighters on duty in the future. And I believe that we can do it. And finally, our city continues to improve its basic health. When we went through SA 2020, the issue that folks got most passionate about, the one they were willing to commit themselves the most to, was the issue of health and wellness. Here in San Antonio, that's a passion that has been earned the hard way. I grew up with a grandmother who, for as long as I lived with her, had diabetes. And toward the end of her life, she had one of her legs amputated. And I bet if we went around the room, we would hear that story over and over again. We've done a lot over the last few years to help ensure that people have the opportunity to get more active and to watch what they eat. I'm especially proud of the Mayor's Fitness Council, and I'd like to ask them to stand if they're here in attendance. We've seen the adult obesity rate go down from 35% to 28% for the first time in a long time underneath the statewide average. And this year in 2014, the Mayor's Fitness Council is hosting FitCitySA.com's Million Pound Challenge with support from the YMCA and from HEB. The goal is for San Antonio residents to collectively lose one million pounds. So put the cheesecake aside, put the chocolate cake aside, drink some water instead of some soda. I pledge today to do my part to help this city be more active, and I challenge you to help San Antonio be a healthier community as well. When we talk about creating a greater city, we know that these things won't come easily. They won't happen quickly. But they can happen if we continue to do what we have always done so well as San Antonians. To put aside what part of town we come from or our ideology and to work together towards solutions. To get involved. I hope in this year, 2014, that you'll visit SA2020.org, that you'll volunteer your time through Big Brothers Big Sisters or another organization to mentor a child or to clean up graffiti, that you'll resolve to make your neighborhood safer by joining Cellular on Patrol or your neighborhood association, that you will help us reach our 2020 goal of creating a more prosperous and livable San Antonio. That's a vision that's going to take all of us. And that's something that Estrella Hernandez knows very well. At the age of 13, Estrella saw the movie Super Size Me. And she decided to do something in her own community to improve public health. Estrella wanted to turn physical activity into something that was fun and enjoyable for her neighbors. So she created an app called We Walk. She garnered $12,000 in support from the 8020 Foundation and others to develop a beta version, which she had plans to unveil at Ciclovia in March, the first Ciclovia on the south side of town. Estrella's sights are set 
on raising $200,000 to finish developing her app, and she has the support of the Mayor's Fitness Council to do so. And Estrella and her mother are here today, and I'd like for us to express our appreciation of them. So as we go through the year 2014, let's do what we do best. Dream together, work together, succeed together. Show that we can roll our sleeves up and get something done in this community for the entire community. San Antonio is growing, it's prospering, it is rising. Let each of us seize the opportunity to make this city we love greater for ourselves, for our children, and for all the generations to come. I know that we can do it. Thank you. Hello, my name is Elvi Adams, and I work for Wells Fargo Bank as a senior business relationship banker and also a president of Alamo Asian American Chamber of Commerce. And Mayor, thank you so much for your message today. I mean, every year we get together on this occasion, and we always bring a, a great message from you. I mean, who is not excited to go home and lose some weight? Come on, right? <laughs> Anyway, I know that each chamber is my colleagues, and we are looking forward to work with you and your staffs and continue, like you say, to uh, work hard, to dream big, and make our city a uh, success in the nations. So um, as an appreciation, we have, a small, we have created a small piece of art as a token of appreciation for you, and it is a symbol that represents your bold leadership and long-lasting policies that uh, have led our community to truly become a city on the rise. So uh, if I can, I have all the chamber leaders come down the stage for the uh, pictures. So on the last note, um, I want to take this opportunity to thank all the leaders who are here today and all our corporate sponsors, as well as all the individual attendees. And thank you so much for joining us today, and we look forward to see you next year. Thank you.